Has this ever happened to you? So you know hole three? Yeah. I threw a thumber off the tee, ended up getting caught up on the left side, so I had to pitch out with a pancake. And then from there, I threw it too far. All I had was a scuba to get up and down. What? There aren't really any rules in disc golf that dictate how you can throw the disc, so we've come up with a lot of different ways. And it can be confusing to know what people are talking about when they describe them to you. So that's the purpose of this video. I scoured the internet and found every kind of throw that I could find, and I'm going to do my best to demonstrate them. Some I will be better at than others, fair warning. But this should at least get you an idea of what the kind of throw should look like. So we'll start pretty basic. We'll start with just backhand. So a backhand is called a backhand because when you release the disc, the back of your hand is pointing towards the target. At least I assume that's why it's called backhand. That would make sense to me. And generally to throw a backhand, you start with the disc in front of you and then it swings back in tight to you. And then as you rotate, you push it out away from you and the disc should fly down the fairway. It should look something like this. So because the disc is spinning clockwise, that's why it fades left at the end. Now in general, this video is just gonna be on how to throw and not the shot shape, but there's a few backhand shot shapes that I definitely wanna cover uh, that aren't like a normal backhand. So this is a backhand roller. To throw a backhand roller, rather than uh, pulling across straight, you generally wanna pull kinda of over. You lean back a little bit and you're trying to release the disc on a much bigger Anheuser angle so the disc can hit the ground and then roll should look something like this. Oh, come on, flip at the end. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, that was really good. Rollers are really an emotional roller coaster. So kind of the opposite of a roller is a spike hyzer. To throw a spike hyzer, generally rather than going flat across, you reach low to high. And the objective is to get the disc to go way up and over and then crash down on the other side without going too far forward. And generally you want to throw the disc on a good bit of hyzer and just try to get it up and over something so it spikes into the ground. Um, I'm throwing a rive here. Just generally you want something over stable because under stable will like flip up and glide left. And usually you're not trying to get left or right. You're just trying to get up and over. Really high, and then spikes in the ground. Maybe 200 feet out there. Uh, and the last, that last shot that could be considered a shot shape is a skip shot. Generally, to throw a skip shot, you want to throw the disc really low and on a lot of hyzer. Kind of like the spike hyzer, except rather than going low to high, you still want to come across pretty flat. And the objective is to get the disc to skip way to the left. Flare. Yeah. Okay, we've got some grass here. That was a raider. Usually faster discs will skip more and more overstable discs will skip more. So that was a lucid raider. And cause, just because of the grass, it didn't skip too much. Usually they'll flare and skip a few more times. The second most common type of throw is a forehand. Forehand is thrown like this with the front of your hand pointing towards the target. I assume that's why it's called the forehand. Uh, to throw a forehand, you grab your disc with your two fingers. Usually most people use two fingers. Some people will use one, but I usually recommend two along the inner rim. And you throw the disc just like you would a sidearm in like baseball or really most other sports. And uh, the disc will be spinning counterclockwise though. So it's going to fade to the right at the end of its flight. Oh, that was bad. For forehand, I usually like something kind of overstable, so I'm going with a Lucid Sergeant. It's a little low, but you can see it fade to the right at the end. So you can also throw rollers with forehands. Usually you want to throw more overstable discs. For backhand rollers, you want to throw something really understable, usually like a Vandal, or that was a Grace. Um, but for forehand rollers, you can throw kind of whatever disc you want, and you usually more overstable, and you want to start it a lot more like turned over so that it hits the ground and rolls. Generally, forehand rollers go fairly straight and then they might tail off to the left or they might just fall over at the end. Oh, the wind's blowing that one left a little bit. It's trying to go straight though. So yeah, rollers are generally not as consistent as air shots just because there's a lot more variables in the ground. So uh, they're I guess a risk reward. They're usually more risky, but they can go farther and get some really interesting shot shapes. 
Moving on to more scramble type shots, we'll start with a thumber. A thumber is a shot that's thrown a lot like a, a baseball throw, if you'd throw from just the outfield in, I guess. Um, if you've played baseball, you can probably throw a thumber a pretty decent ways. So to hold a thumber, usually you want to set the disc in your hand on the webbing of your thumb uh, with the flight plate towards your fingers, and then wrap your thumb around and wrap all your fingers underneath. And uh, the goal of a thumber is usually to get up and over something and spike in on the other side. My thumbers don't go very far, but there are people who can throw them really, really far. Generally, you want something not too fast because then the rim gets wider here and it's less comfortable to hold. And you want something flat and fairly overstable. This is a Lucid X Evader. So it should be okay for me, but the last time I threw a thumber, I hurt myself. So I'm not gonna throw this one very hard at all. I guess do so at your own risk. So yeah, generally thumbers will pan, start out going to the left, and then flip over and spike in back to the right. And then kind of the opposite of a thumber is a tomahawk. To throw a tomahawk, you hold the disc just like you would for a forehand, except rather than throw the disc out here, you throw the disc over your head, almost like a tennis serve. You want to come over on the disc and have it be a little bit on this angle so the disc can pan and then spike into the ground. Um, tomahawk is another one that I'm not very good at at all. So. Usually uh, you want to throw a flat overstable disc for tomahawks because they will resist turning. But if you need something to flip quicker, then you can throw a less overstable disc. We'll start with a felon. And if this one does not flip enough to show like the flight path, then, uh, then I'll, th I'll try something a little bit less overstable. But in general, where the thumber will pan to the left and then finish to the right, the tomahawk will pan to the right and then finish back to the left. <laughs> oh, nope. I never finished back. Okay. This is a Maverick. This is much less overstable. We'll hope this one goes. Yeah, there we go. Pans to the right. Finishes back to the left. I don't usually throw tomahawks, but if you threw an overstable disc really, really hard, it would fly about like that Maverick does. So both thumbers and tomahawks are designed to fly upside down. My favorite way to throw an upside down shot is actually referred to as a grenade. Uh, to throw a grenade, you grab the disc like you would for a backhand, except you flip it upside down. So your thumb is on the inside rim. And some people will do their pointer finger on the inside rim and lock it in with their thumb. But the goal here is very similar to like a spike hyzer, except rather than coming up on a hyzer angle, you throw the disc relatively flat, but just as high as you can. And the disc should pan and then spike into the ground. And usually you want to throw also something flat and overstable. Usually for these like scramble type shots, you're not trying to get too much distance. You're just trying to get uh, placement or get like a trick shot or something like that out. So uh, that's why you generally throw the more overstable flat discs because they pan slower. So we'll try a grenade here. So throwing a grenade you throw a backhand upside down really high but there's nothing to say that you have to throw that high shot with a upside down backhand if you have an overstable and flat enough disc you can throw it just like a normal backhand but on an anheuser and the disc will kind of fly a little bit it's generally not that useful of a shot but it kind of looks cool so this is just an upside down backhand this is a another lucid x fell another very overstable disc see it doesn't go anywhere it generally kind of flops when it hits the ground, so it's not usually that useful, but it's cool. So now we're getting into more trick shots rather than actually useful shots. This throw is the Skamahawk. This is where you take an understable disc and throw it on a lot of Anheuser really, really high, and your goal is to get the disc to pan and spike into the ground. Kind of the opposite of a grenade. Rather than throwing an overstable disc upside down, you're throwing an understable disc. I would say right side up, but it's kind of vertical. Um, I've never pulled this shot off successfully, but I'm going to try. This is a beat-up Maverick, so it, sh it might have enough flip. We are in a tailwind, though, so we'll see. Uh, nope. <laughs> That's just a really bad roller. But yeah, if that disc were to flip and then spike into the ground, so if it was like a couple of years older, that would be a scumhog. So a Scooby is another name for a grenade shot that I threw earlier. A scoober is a different kind of a shot, usually where you hold the disc 
uh, like you would for a forehand, and it, you throw it kind of like a tomahawk, except you come from your chest or kind of out in front of you rather than over your head. It's generally an approach shot, or sometimes if you're trying to give something a go, uh, it does tend to slide on, on the flight plate because it's upside down when it hits the ground. So it can be useful for some trick shots, but it's usually better to just throw the disc right side up if you can. But if you're in like a situation where you can't, and you have to come out, then you can just throw. It's like a baby tomahawk, but it looks something like this. Okay, so now we're out of like anything resembling useful shots, and these are generally just goofy shots. The first one is a pterodactyl. Um, this one, I think Big Germ pop popularized it. You start with a disc kind of on your shoulder blade, and then you run up almost like you would throw like a forehand, except you duck your head and throw the disc like that. Um, it's going to air bounce quite a bit. Generally, you want to throw something pretty understable. Um, and I don't have a downhill here, so who knows how this is going to go. I'm also not very flexible. If you can throw one of these, let me know in the comments. That's impressive. Uh, this is a grace that I'm throwing, but I don't know if this is going to go very well. <laughs> oh, not at all. But you still tried to air bounce <laughs> a little bit. I want to try again. I want to try a mid-range. I'll try a truth. <laughs> that hurt my wrist. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with that one. The last like throw, I'll get into putts in a minute. The last like throw that I've seen is a chicken wing. This one, you grab the disc just with your fingers on the flight plate, your thumb upside down, and then you come around like this to throw it rather than throwing a forehand. You, it's, it's not very useful, but it, uh, it, I guess it's a trick shot. This is generally how it goes. <laughs> that might be better than my forehand, honestly. Those are all the ways to like throw a disc off the tee or for an approach shot, but putting is something a little bit different. Generally putting is going to be unique to everybody, but there are some ways that we describe it. So we'll start with the general message of throwing a disc, or a putt. Most people uh, will either be a spin, putt or, spin putter or a push putter. A spin putter pulls the disc back and curls their wrist and kind of snaps the disc at the basket, about like this. And then a push putter, almost more like horseshoes, that's the example I use. I don't really push putt that much, so I might miss this 10-footer here. Generally keeps their, their joints more locked in place and has more of a swing motion to it while springing the disc off their fingers. It's very windy. I'm probably going to miss this. I made it! Sweet! Not a perfect representation, but it's close. And then some people will do somewhere in the middle. They usually call that a spush putt. A portmanteau of spin and push. I think portmanteau is the right word. I don't know. But uh, yeah, where you kind of come down and then you bend your wrist and extend your elbow, but not as much as if you were a spin putt, but they're not locked like they would if they were a push putt. So it looks kind of like that. Those all probably look pretty spinny because that's my natural putt, but um, that's generally the difference. As far as stance while you're putting, generally most people will use, if they can, a staggered stance, which is where your, usually your dominant foot is in front of your other foot, and that way you can push off of your back leg. But it is allowed to do a straddle stance, where one foot is behind your mini marker and the other foot is off to the side. As long as it's not closer to the basket, you can stand like this and throw your putt just the same. Um, some people will even do this for every putt and not just putts where they need the space to the side of their mini. Usually with a straddle putt, you don't get as much power from your legs, but if you bend your legs and straighten them a little bit, you can still get some power, but you need to make sure it's not forwards, otherwise you'll foot fault when you take an extra step. Some of the weirder kind of putts, um, some people will throw a pancake putt, where it's the disc is upside down, gripped very similar to like a grenade or an upside down throw, but just for putting. Uh, that putt tends to spit a lot less because it just gets knocked down easier. The wind's going to get underneath it less. Um, but generally, it's just for tap-ins. People won't do that outside of like 10 feet. And then kind of a trick shot for putting, but some people are really, really good at, is a turbo putt. To so throw a turbo putt, you put your thumb in the middle of the disc, and then your other four fingers are on the rim. And the idea is you start with a disc up above your head, and then you spin the disc as you push it forward, and the disc will fly. And you can use this to get like over bushes or other obstacles. I'm not very good at it. Johnny McRae is really well known for his turbo putts. I barely made that and it was 10 feet, but 
if you have practiced your turbo putt, it can be really useful and definitely save some strokes out there on the course. The last kind of putt I want to talk about is a jump putt. Uh, it's important to know you can only use a jump putt if you're more than 10 meters away from the basket or outside the circle. Uh, but a jump putt is just like any other putt, except while you're putting the disc, you jump. It's important to throw the disc before your feet leave the ground, but basically you're pushing enough more with your legs that your momentum carries after you've thrown the disc and you end up jumping. Or some people will do a step putt where they just walk through. Just another way to get extra power on the disc when you're more than 10 meters away from the target. So uh, a jump putt, I'm not 10 meters away, but if I was, you wouldn't be able to see me. So uh, a jump putt generally looks like this. If you do it from a straddle stance, some people do it from staggered, um, but it's the same idea. And then a step putt, once again, you have to be outside of 10 meters to do a step putt, usually looks like this. So those are all the ways that I found doing my research how to throw a disc. There were some that were very confusing in there, but if you know of a different way, let me know down in the comments, or if you learned some that you hadn't heard of before, let me know down there as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Dynamic Discs for more tips on how to become a better disc golfer, and we'll catch you next time.